Keith has been talking with Michelle about hydraulic fracturing. Michelle is a geologist or rock expert with the AER, which has been regulating hydraulic fracturing since it began in the 1950s. Since then, more than 100,000 wells have been hydraulically fractured. Keith has more questions about the impacts of hydraulic fracturing, or as it is sometimes called, fracking. Specifically, Keith has heard that hydraulic fracturing causes earthquakes. So what's going on? Hydraulic fracturing has recently been linked to some of the earthquake activity in Alberta, Michelle says. We know this because seismologists, who are scientists that study ground movement, monitor any seismic activity using a scientific network of more than 50 monitoring stations across the province. At the AER, we have our own seismologists within the Alberta Geological Survey, or AGS. Michelle decides that this is a good time to introduce Keith to Jason, one of the AER seismologists. She calls him on video chat for his help in explaining earthquakes in Alberta. Jason explains that they have recorded both man-made and naturally occurring earthquake activity. However, most of these have been too small to be felt. Keith asks, how do we even know if an earthquake has happened if we can't feel it? Jason explains that scientists use an instrument called a seismometer to measure earthquake activity based on a scale called a Richter scale. For example, you usually can't feel a quake measuring 2.0, but at 4.0, it would feel like a truck passing by your house. Jason says that in one area of Alberta, just west of a town called Fox Creek, Scientists recorded three earthquakes measuring over 4.0 in the Richter scale over a one-year period. Keith asks, how do we know if they were man-made or natural earthquakes? Through extensive research, Jason says that seismologists determined there was a link between these earthquakes and hydraulic fracturing activity in the area. That hydraulic fracturing, in fact, caused old faults to slip again as an earthquake. Keith asks if hydraulic fracturing is still allowed there. Michelle tells Keith that while it is still allowed, there are new requirements for the Fox Creek area that go beyond the AER's existing rules. Before a company begins hydraulic fracturing operations in the area, they must prepare a response plan that says what they will do if an earthquake happens. A response plan may include reducing the pressure of the fluids being pumped into the ground or not fracturing at every stage along the horizontal well. In addition, once hydraulic fracturing operations start, operators must monitor for earthquakes within five kilometers of their well. If they detect seismic activity, they follow the AER's traffic light process, which outlines what action to take at different levels of seismicity. Operations can proceed normally if there is mild seismic activity up to 2.0 on the Richter scale. If any seismic events between 2.0 and 3.9 on the Richter scale are recorded, companies must report the activity to the AER and follow their response plans. And if operators observe a seismic event of 4.0 or greater, they must immediately stop operations and report it to the AER. They will not be allowed to resume hydraulic fracturing operations without AER approval. Keith asks, could earthquakes happen in other areas around the province? And if so, what is the AER going to do about it? Michelle says it's possible. That's why the AGS continues to study this area and other regions in the province. The AER's top priority is public safety. And our seismologists continue to work with other scientists across Canada to study earthquakes. If there is activity similar to Fox Creek, the AER may extend the requirements to include other areas of the province. Michelle thanks Jason for the information and tells Keith that energy development, like any other industrial activity, has impacts. 
the AER's job is to develop and enforce rules to manage them and make sure public safety and the environment is protected. Michelle tells Keith that if he would like more information, he can find it on the AGS website at ags.aer.ca. Now that Keith has a better understanding of earthquakes and hydraulic fracturing, he has questions about other potential impacts, like how does the AER make sure our water is protected? For more Conversations That Matter, click on one of the links below or check out the Alberta Energy Regulator at AER.ca.